Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome to a mod tutorial with Lone Debater 7 and today we're going to be taking a look at how to install the Grim Internals mod for Grim Dawn um, you know on PC Windows 10 is what I'm running right now so if you've got Windows 10 PC and you want to try uh, the Grim Internals um, mod for Grim Dawn uh, this is the right place to show you how to install that so first thing you're gonna do is you're actually going to go download the mod. So if you search Grim Internals, uh, you'll on, on Google or whatever, you'll be able to find this Grim Internals forum page, which has a download. So it'll say you need this Visual uh, C Sharp Sharp. Make sure you've got that installed. And then you want to click this. It will take you over. You pick how you want to download it. And then you'll end up with your Grim Internals zip folder. Um, I am just going to run back real quick because uh, I wanted to talk about the installation. Now the installation instructions are not necessarily bad. You extract the contents of the zip file to your game installation directory, run the Grim Internal 64.exe. Um, so you do that. Uh, if you have the game through Steam, which you most likely do, just make sure you have Steam open when you're doing this, otherwise it's not going to initialize the right way. Um, uh, Steam Cloud is not working right now, so that that's fine. And then it has some info about how the mod actually works. Uh, basically, the Grim Internals mod will allow your character to auto pick up loot. It has like a kill counter and stuff like that, and you can filter out what's going to be automatically picked up a lot more it, in a more substantial way than the game does it. Um, I guess is the big benefit. So. Before I so once you have this downloaded the mod right which is right here and once you have your Steam open go to your library go to your Grim Dawn and what I would suggest is you click this gear wheel hit manage browse local files this will pull up where your Grim Dawn save info is and I would go into the save well maybe not I thought. That's weird. They don't have like the saves in the save folder. Interesting. Okay, fine. That's not a big deal. But w what I was going to say is I would go in here. This is where we're going to end up extracting this. So as opposed to co uh, copying it, I would cut it and paste it in here just so it it's a little bit easier. And then you want to extract here. So I'm using WinRAR. So I have this extract here option for .rar files. So there we go, that is put inside. Um, so you can take this Grim Internals out now because you don't need this zip file in there. Um, well, I didn't want to copy it, I wanted to delete it, that's fine. Uh, so this is the base game application. This is the mod you just put in there. So if you double click on that, it will run the setup for this mod. And you want to do this before you launch the game because or this will launch the game as part of setting up the mod and everything like that so you want to double click on that the first time you run it that way it can initialize all the correct files and all that noise for you so this takes since my computer's garbage this takes a minute so there we go create entertainment it's going to launch the game like normal and you come in you'll after it loads you'll be able to see your characters and all that stuff so i'm just going to go into my level 55 defiler this is a pyromancer or um this is a uh, necromancer mixed with a demolitionist um really fun to play i'm at homestead i think i have to do the ethereal agglomeration quest or whatever um on epic mode uh so i've already beaten the game once i'm going through it a second time I'm trying to get work my way up to ultra but anyway so we've got this we've got our cool little stuff here i am so you can see this stuff i believe it is control d uh well let's see if we can figure out the key binding so these are probably just going to be the base ones so let me do this let me switch over to our grim dawn mod guide so we can find the key and then we can talk about everything inside so this is what the interface is supposed to look like um, um, 
So control F1 turns it turns off on off info boxes and the UI so you can turn like the overlay that we get over here with all the like numbers and shit in the upper left you can turn that off with control F1 um, let's see where does it tell you how to go in and configure the filter because that's what this does it auto picks stuff up for you right but you should be able to go in so to enable disable control F5 okay control F5 let's try that Return to game. So control F1 turns off all this overlay stuff. So just bear that in mind. You can do that as well. Uh, control F5 will bring up this guy for you, the internals configurator. So it's its own little page. It pops you out of the game and into your own little window. And this is where you get to pick what you want automatically picked up. So you can go through and say, I want components auto picked up, I want lore notes picked up automatically, blueprints and rare items, you can turn all of them on, you can turn off some of them, you can kind of play with that as you will, but this will automatically pick things up for you. So with all these turned on, if we come across a blueprint randomly while fighting, it'll automatically pick up, if we get a rare item it'll pick up, components, all that stuff will auto pick. Um, info box, this, will, this is other stuff, so you can have the kill counter turned on off, um, item counter show buffs, uh, show skills. There's a bunch of different info box stuff you can change. Uh, you can do misc, hide things. Um, what is that? Okay. Um, you also have monster stuff, so you can change the info on monsters, change the info on players. Dropped item, you can go through and have like a item beam show up for specific prefix and suffixes on your item so that's pretty cool teleport list um, this will give you some other stuff day night cycle time scale uh, so you can control you know time of day and how fast it goes through that uh, you can reset your dps um, list so i'm believing I, I think these show you so incoming dps is how much damage you've been taking Pets DPS, if you're a necromancer like my character is, it'll show you um, how much damage per second your minions are doing. Uh, then you've got Del DPS, that's the damage your character specifically is doing. Um, so not a big deal. You've got item markings, that's cool, double rares, so these are more loot beam things. And then you can disable fog, so that's great. Um, do we just have to control F5 to get out? Nope. Okay. So, whatever. That's fine. So, it should have reinitialized. So, I'm just going to get some dudes picked up and we're going to go run up here and try this bad mama out because I would like to see how this stuff goes. So, it does like label. So, it gives. So, that's the mon. So, you can see the labels above stuff now. So, you can see the labels on my. Um, pets, you can see the label on me, you can see the label on the monsters, it tells you what they, what each thing is. Um, so kind of cool in that nature, like if you were curious, oh, what is this specific type of enemy, this is a good way to kind of figure that out. It will tell you what it, what its name is, and I'm assuming that they picked that up, um, straight from the, like, game. So, like, they didn't come up with these names, whoever made you know, like the maker of the game came up with the names for these guys. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't been able to tell... So all this random shit in here I had before. Um, you know, it might actually help if I put on my passives. There we go. Okay. Not like we're struggling or anything. These guys aren't that strong, but still... Make sure you turn on your passives. Don't be a scrub. So we picked up all that stuff automatically. I think that's just from the base game, though. Mm. Yeah, but anyway. So the concept is, if you come across different stuff, it'll automatically pick it up for you. Um, I'm... 
kind of curious. I'm not 100% sure if it's auto-picking armor for us as well. We probably just haven't come across anything all that good yet, which makes sense. You know, rares and stuff like that are rare. You don't get them all the time. Um, so that that's fine, but... Um, it would kind of be nice just to see how the loot drop stuff works. I don't know. Like, that'll probably take us a while to reach something powerful enough. Does this have a node inside of it? Yeah, so see that? That had a lore node inside of it. It auto-picked that up for us. So the mod is working. Um, yeah, you know, that 25 XP is going to be super juicy to us um but anyway so there there's the mod is working it does auto pick stuff if you look in the up on the left hand side of my screen um it'll show us so this is the number of monsters you've killed so common monsters uh a little bit stronger monsters hero boss nemesis and i yeah so the, those are the different categories it tallies your kills tallies your loot collected items and bits uh so these are all have all been just yellows and i am not picking up yellows right now it's not even showing through on my loot filter uh, i only am doing red, green blue and purples at this point just because i don't think it's worth picking up anything lower i never use anything lower than green on my gear Shows your XP, says roughly how long it'll take you to level up based off the current zone. So that's actually pretty good. Your XP per hour is what that is measuring. Um, so that is definitely a big perk of this. Incoming DPS, I believe these are going to be, you know, what types of damages you have to deal with in this area. So most of it's physical, right? We encountered some pierce, cold, and acid. But most of it is physical damage, right? And that makes sense. This is right outside Devil's Crossing. It's at the start of the game. So there's nothing super duper crazy with weird damage types quite yet. Um, if we go fight like a boss or something, or we go into Act 3, there will be Aether damage. There will be um, Chaos damage. There will be Bleed damage. So this is useful if you're struggling getting through a, like a part of the... Um, a part of the story and you're not sure why you're dying so easily based off of what you see here you can say oh okay i need it i'm taking a lot of acid damage what's my acid resistance at and let's just say it was only at 10 percent instead of 80 like mine you'll be like oh okay i need to get some gear with acid on it um and so you can use that to kind of guide your your gear selection i'm gonna sell out all this shit because i'm not gonna use it i am keeping these uh leg armors um, I think that these are going to be a pretty good upgrade from the ones that I've got on right now. So I'm looking forward to getting to use that. It does suck these don't have the explosive strike, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, but anyway, guys, so that is basically my coverage on how to install the Grim Internals mod um, and kind of an overview on how to configure it, how to you know go in and what each of the menu options does how it kind of functions in game so you get these name plates you get health bars on everything you get your counters over here and then it auto picks gear and notes and you can configure all that based off of what you're trying to pick up right um this definitely is a quality of life improvement mod i would say just because having just the counters alone is really useful so like maybe you're grind so i need to get 58 to wear those leg armors so i have three levels maybe you're grinding out experience seeing how much experience you're getting in different places can help you pick where you should grind out your levels um so like i need 151,000 xp to get about uh, a little more than two-thirds of my next level so i'm probably wanting to make like more than 100,000 xp an hour um, in order to, you know, hit level 58 in a reasonable amount of time. So I can try out different areas and kind of figure out where I can do that. So like the Conclave of the Three, this like desert area is pretty good for leveling. Um, just doing the Shattered Worlds in the Conclave of the Three is pretty good leveling. Um, you also can try out different locations up by the mainline story. So like the Rotting Croplands has a lot of monsters. So maybe that's a good area to try. Um, you could do Smuggler's Pass, 
four hills. So there, there's a bunch of different options. I don't know exactly what the best area to level up is going to be for you, but um, this mod with its XP counter right here can kind of lend guidance to that. So you go, you clear out an area and see what your level up timer is. So if it's an hour or less, it's probably a good area for you to grind out. Um, if it's more than an hour, so like if it's more than two hours, so like if I was in an area grinding right now and it was three hours to my next level, I would go somewhere else because this is way too long to get one level in this game, in my opinion. Um, so just kind of do with that as you will. You can manage it yourself, I suppose, but I thought I'd talk about that a little bit too. But anyway, guys, um... I thought I'd just make a quick tutorial about this mod for Grim Dawn because I've really been enjoying this game. Um, it's pretty good if you like action RPGs or ARPGs, whatever. Uh, so anyway, um, thought I'd talk about this mod. It was mentioned to me by one of my friends. Um, and so here's a guide on how to install it and how to use it. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, subscribe as always. And until next time, this has been Lone Debater 7. And we will see ya.